so you got Aetna, DVH, you got Manhattan, Moo, Meritas, National Care yeah. Dental, Medico. Meritas, I'm not even going to put Medico. If you're writing Medico, Manhattan's already killed it. You should yeah. stop writing Medico. Medico is Manhattan wins. Right <laughs> Meritas, uh, Dental and Vision, Moo, Dental and Vision. Um, what's another one? Nationwide? Nationwide, yeah. Uh, Humana. I'm not putting that. Down. So that's the only other one I got. So uh, <laughs> you mean and medical are like down there in the same same gutter. I mean, I don't know. I would. I'm not gonna write it. If somebody wants to sign it, they. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna do it. But um, less that y'all told me to write. Someone wanted dental only. You mean? Yeah. If I wanted dental only now, I'd write nationwide. Yeah. But it doesn't make any sense if you're just doing it for price and like, well, I don't need those vision and hearing benefits because the dental's more expensive on Nationwide yeah. than just buying a Manhattan or an Aetna. And I find a lot of a lot of people have been more open to Nationwide coming off work coverage because they use the VSP network and it works more like their work coverage, and yeah. especially with the no waiting period. I, I want to write more of the Nationwide. I mean, long term, it's great for us too. You know, it's not a you know you know you're not getting paid as fast on it, but you're it's a level you know. The concept makes sense for you and the client because you're only going to make more money if they're happier with it long term. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's waiving the waiting periods if they have other coverage, a Cigna PPO, even if they're coming off Manhattan Life. So if you got somebody that's dissatisfied with Manhattan Life and you can flop them to Nationwide, they can waive their waiting period, <clears throat> and then you're going into a higher renewal chain. It's actually the most profitable way to do it. Write them all Manhattan DVH, and then a year later. <laughs> there's, there's one more, but I don't know how much how much we write it. I haven't written hardly anything for Nat Jen's dental thing. Uh, I don't like the network on it. Okay. I've written it before, and I've had okay. people that I've never written it. In this area, it's not not been effective. Um, you know, maybe you come back and look at it again. But normally, that's the one product in the Nat Gen platform that I always go to Manhattan or somewhere else. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the biggest reason that Emeritus comes up so much in the forums and on and Medicare gurus is because of that no waiting period. But it's on majors, on major dental. But the problem with it is it's, it's based, so it used to be based on the calendar year. So if somebody got, uh, di got, a, got the policy in November, and then right away it was paying 15%, 15% on majors, which is more than zero. That's what everybody says, so it's better than nothing. Is it? I wouldn't sell anything to cover 15% of something. I just won't do it. I don't, I don't, for me it's not better than zero. By the time they pay their premium and they get 15%, that ain't a hookup to me. And then second year, what does it go to? 50% on majors. Manhattan goes to 70% after 12 months on majors, based on the policy year. Emeritus has now changed to where it's a policy year as well. So a lot of people still don't know that. They're still selling it the old way because they didn't really broadband announce it. But Emeritus is paying 15% for the full first 12 months of the policy. It doesn't reset January 1. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with somebody that comes in. Most of your people that have major dental work lined up are not great leads anyway. Occasionally you get somebody that's retiring, losing group dental, and they can't keep it and they need something else, nationwide. No waiting period. So with nationwide doing that, all the good prospects that need first year dental coverage, I don't have a I just don't have a use for Emeritus anymore. And that 15% is, is an insulting level of coverage for me to run. They'd be better off doing like Manhattan does, in my opinion. Um, but Manhattan now has the 1K, 1500, and then the 3K option. When you have a $3,000 benefit option, and after 12 months it's paying 70%, after 24 it's paying 80% <clears throat> on majors, that's the biggest payout option for dental. So if they can deal with the 12 month waiting period, Manhattan, if they can, and they have a waiting <coughs> 12 month waiting period nationwide, if they can't deal with the waiting period and they don't have a way to get their waiting period waived, hopefully they got Medicare Advantage. Because that'll have no waiting period.
and that might be a selling point on Medicare Advantage when it's available. But none of them cover what though, except for Ameritize. Except for Ameritize, I I don't I don't write a lot of for ortho ortho, ortho. Mm -hmm. and I would still like I would still like so ortho would be covered under the majors portion, so it'd be fifteen percent first year, fifty percent later with like what fifteen hundred dollar max. So I mean. I, mean, I guess there's a there's a play there for orthodontia you know if somebody has like a family dental plan um, I'm just not a I'm just not a big advocate for it well that's mostly when it comes to play is when it's someone that has a child or something that they're worried about getting braces on mm -hmm. I've never had it actually be <clears throat> an issue with yeah. our market I mean we can we have the contract you know it's just not it's just not as big of a, a selling point Aetna is a convenience play at this point. They got so much, right. such good coverage on such good platform with MedSup and the cancer and the hospital indemnity and all that. That when somebody asks about dental, it sure is easy to just click dental, and it's a big brand name. That's a good but one. the product is very similar to Manhattan with a two thousand dollar top end option. Um, but the the major dental never goes above um, sixty percent. And then there's lower limits on vision and hearing. Manhattan will let you use the entire benefit option for vision or hearing as well. So the Manhattan one long term is the best one. And anybody that thinks it's not, I, I don't know what they're looking at. I don't I don't get it. You know. Um, nationwide is right there with it as far as coverage, but it's expensive. And it doesn't have a hearing option and the vision option is pretty expensive to add. If you're looking for vision only, nationwide vision only, it's Probably the one I would go with. United Healthcare has a vision only option. Ain't even worth selling. I mean, you guys got to make money to stay in business, and that United Healthcare vision. It's like there's one for seven or eight dollars, and there's one for eleven or twelve. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a, and it's it's only like a two hundred or one hundred and fifty dollar annual benefit anyway. So it's uh, like a, you know, I don't I don't really. The vision only ones aren't that great anyway, but some people just want it because they're used to it. So I just like it when it's included. And this vision benefit in Manhattan is so much bigger than any other vision benefit. And people that complain about usual and customary charges versus actual, which one of these covers actual charges? No, no. They're all either network or if you go outside the network, you're held to the maximum network allowable charge, which is the usual and customary charge. So. This is one of the only ones that will even be really friendly when you go out of the network. The rest of these will not. Nationwide's supposed to, but now their network is probably better than the rest because they've bought into Maximum Care Pro, which has got like three or four networks together or something. So Mutual and Omaha and Aetna are not real good out of network. Mutual Omaha, if you're doing implants, you probably need uh, implants would be Mutual Omaha or Nationwide, um, Nationwide has that five thousand dollar option with implant coverage on there, so that would be, you know, a selling point for it. Mutual Omaha's is a little cheaper, uh, and they do. Mutual Omaha's is a, a decent product, but it's expensive and it's not age banded, so it's real expensive for people. They sent you a pen, a toothbrush. Oh yeah. I didn't get that. You didn't get one? No, I, I didn't get I that. think nationwide really is becoming the most robust because when I went through the other day with the client, you know, and I have to be honest with you, I've been kind of staying away from it because you know it was so difficult for a yeah. while. We have the I think the commissions on it are worked out now. Well, but even right. just even getting the text thing to go or the email, like people go, I never got my email. Never oh, my supposed, supposedly they fixed a lot of that. Yeah, they did. So the last two that I've done, it's worked great. Yeah, and then so, I went look at the implants thing, and then a lot of people that are coming off of work coverage, it's like it's just like their work coverage. They're like, I'll take it. Yeah, this one is honest. better. You got to get the price outside your head. Yeah, most people that are looking at it, it look at the price, and you're thinking, man, I wouldn't buy that because it's expensive. Some of them will. I mean, it's it so, is the most robust. I will buy it just to get the two free cleanings a year because that's what they're used to. I would say <laughs> nationwide is. Like, I don't want that Manhattan. It's thirty four dollars, but I'll take the sixty dollar this one. Nationwide is probably my number one right now. Manhattan Life would be my number two. Mm -hmm. um, and then Aetna would be number three, just for sheer convenience. And if you're writing Heartland, the Heartland Hip Rider on there, the uh, their Dental and Vision Rider, EVH Rider, is actually a really good rider 
problem you got to run into is it's covered under the hospital indemnity card. So every time they go to the dentist, they're like, this is hospital insurance, and they, won't, they don't file it. So you'd end up filing their claims for them. We're helping them most of the time. Where when it's, when it's Manhattan, we deal with some of that where they don't want to file it, mostly with optometrists, but most of the dentists will file it. And they'll, get, they'll file it, take the claim, and then bill them the difference. Um, most of them will. And when they won't, I tell them to go to a different dentist. Is it, does the Manhattan Lake pay on actual charges for glasses and hearing aids? It's based on usual and customary as well. And that's the reason they went to usual and customary was glasses because people were getting like designer frames and transitional lenses and blue light and they'd get everything and it was having to pay on the actual percentage. And you can rack up a pretty hefty glasses bill when you do that. I know, I, I did it and I have Manhattan. And um, there was one year where on just my alone they paid out like 700 and something dollars on glasses. And my premium at the time was like 25 bucks a month. So that's where they were losing their money. So the, the usual and customary is made to cap the amount of, of that they're going to pay on each individual pair of frames. Typically, that's what they're capping because they're, they're going to say, well, look, you can get Ray-Bans, but we're only going to pay a couple hundred bucks for, towards the frames. The cool thing about theirs, though, is you could get multiple sets. And they're just holding you to usual and customary of each set. So Which is like, about 200 bucks? I don't know. There's, they're, they not, they don't have that in writing anywhere. Okay. There's not anything in writing. I don't know what they use to do it, but uh, normally it doesn't really raise a flag unless it's some super expensive pair of glasses. Most of your older population is not buying super expensive glasses, mm -hmm. so it's not a big issue. Um, we, uh, but I mean, I've gotten like, I've gotten two sets of glasses and one set of uh, sunglasses in a year, and it paid on all three of them. So, none of these other ones are going to do that. Right. Edna's going to cap it at 200 mm -hmm. a year it on vision. Yeah, uh, 200, 200 every two years or 200 every year? Okay. Either way, it's capped for, for glasses yeah, like oh, at low yeah. amounts. Even nationwide on the vision is not as good. Nationwide dental is the best, but if vision is a big concern, you know, the Manhattan $3,000 option is probably the best, you know. but. You know, the, you should be able to, if anybody wants dental and vision, if you got those three, you can sell them. You can sell them. Mm -hmm. Edna's is cheaper too, by the way. Edna's is probably the cheapest one. Because you can get their $1,000 option for somebody over 65 for like 31 bucks. Your 2000 is sometimes cheaper than Manhattan's 1500 Yeah, their 2000 is 39 for a 65 to 74 year old. So that's pretty, that is cheap. But I mean, they do have much, a lot more limitations than Manhattan and Nationwide. So there's a, probably a good reason it's cheaper. They have a lot less potential to pay out. So, you know, but, and this is the hard part, like when you're cross, you're saying you're rewriting somebody's Medicare supplement and you're saving 50 bucks a month, you normally want to cross sell them something where you can also still save them money. Hey, I can, I can save you $20 a month and get you dental vision in here. Well, it's easier to do that with a $31 Aetna plan than a $62 Manhattan Life $3,000 plan, you know. The benefits can be better on the Manhattan one, but you, you'd have to save them $80 a month to create that same margin. Mm -hmm. So Now, sometimes you could say, look, I can, I can save you a dollar and get you the same exact benefits you have plus dental vision and hearing. And, uh, if they didn't call you to complain about their premium, sometimes it's easier to do that. If they're complaining about the premium, they want to save money. So you need to get them, you have to create more of a margin. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you are doing that and you're rewriting a supplement and you're saving somebody, if it's only 20 bucks a month, the odds of you being able to cross sell something are a lot lower. You know? Now we still want to do that, like, you know, but um, if you're saving somebody 60 bucks a month, pretty easy to cross sell them something for 15 to 30 bucks a month because then you can still save them 30 to 45 dollars a month. <laughs>